Hi, I'm Reggie White of the Philadelphia Eagles, and this is my beautiful, lovely, wonderful wife, Sarah. Reggie and I are both very strong individuals, which means that once in a while, we have a different of opinion. And at times, those differences can lead to little arguments, but eventually Sarah comes around to see things my way. Oh, Reggie, you're so cute yeah, when you try to lie. But now let's tell them what really happened. Well, the truth is, I don't win all the arguments. In fact, many times I have to come to say I'm sorry because I've been wrong. Or sometimes I have to apologize for not understanding you or for losing my cool. So sit back, listen, and learn as we all look at how to deal with conflicts. So I just react sometimes, and sometimes I get frustrated and and uh, and say things and do things that uh, I regret afterwards. When we argue, it's not it's not like we just have an argument. It's like there's a wave of venom under it. There have been times where I've thought, oh, gee, I. What kind of mistake have I made here? I don't want to live with this person for the rest of my life. I want to get out of here. Hi, I'm Rick Nielsen, and welcome back to our series, Marriage for Lovers Only. If you've been married for a while, even as little as 60 minutes, then you've probably already experienced it. <laughs> of course, I'm talking about your first argument as a married couple. One of the things that we argue about a lot is, is the house it, and, and, and uh, things being clean. You know, and it, it just cascades from, you know, one issue like, why are your shoes there? To, why don't you ever pick up your shoes? To, why is this house always a mess? Look, my shoes are always put away. The kids aren't putting their things away because you don't put your things away. Uh, so it, you know, it, it becomes a barrage. Sabrina will drive up behind somebody in her car and hope they'll get out of the way and she'll just get right on them. And, and he could be like 350 pounds and, and seven feet tall. And I, I guess she expects when he jumps out of the car, <laughs> I'm going to take care of it, which I'm not. <laughs> and uh, that kind of annoys me. I feel like he doesn't understand me, so I lay guilt on him. And I make him feel like he has to meet every need that I have. And that, in turn, makes him defensive, like, you know, why are you doing this to me? She hated sports, and so she didn't care. I never saw another TV sports game in her life, you know. And she told me one time she'd have to wear AstroTurf for me to pay attention to her. Sunday morning, uh, always feeling like it's my responsibility to uh, jump out of bed and help get the girls ready for church and fix a, a nice breakfast before we leave and then, you know, come home and while he's in here reading the paper and watching a little bit of sports, I'm in the kitchen trying to whip up a great Sunday afternoon dinner. And then by the time that's over and dishes are cleaned up, I'm exhausted and I feel kind of resentful that I didn't have more time to just do what I wanted to do. I'll sit down. I'm ready. I've got an agenda in my own mind about what I want to do. I sit down. I grab the paper and it's, honey, could you do this or that? And it's like, Arr. you know, you know, all I want to do is sit down and read the paper. And so she has an agenda for me to do, and I have another agenda, and, some, and many times that's irritating to me. I was in the hospital with ulcers because our situation was so bad, and uh, Mark at that time was very angry, and he didn't really know at what, and uh, he was very violent, and he didn't ever fit, hit me uh, physically, but he was very abusive otherwise, and as I laid in the hospital with ulcers, I thought, this is ridiculous, I'm going to die. Whether it's a difference of opinion, misunderstanding, or out and out power struggles, there are going to be times when we clash, disagree, argue, and fight. Think about your own marriage. What do you fight about the most? The primary is money. That's probably like everybody, I think it's probably money. I think my husband and I find about things that most couples fight about, money and sex. 
if I would disagree about sex more more often than anything else. Maybe I'd like him to take more control of the kids sometimes. How to raise the kids. Disagreements about money, sex, and raising children are pretty typical in any marriage. After all, you have two individuals going through the lifelong process of becoming one flesh. But most experts believe the number one problem involved in that process is not money, sex, or children, but a lack of communication. Now, look, honey, I, I know you believe that you understand that what it is you think I said, but I'm not so sure that you realize that what you're hearing is not what I meant. But, dear, what I meant to say was that even though I said something entirely different than what you thought you heard, well, you obviously did not hear what I thought I was saying. Okay, what I'm trying to say is that although you're hearing, right, what I'm saying, I don't think that I'm really saying what it is you think you heard. See? <laughs> what we have here is a failure to communicate. Many times we think we understand what our spouse is saying, but often what we heard is not what he or she meant at all. It's this lack of communication especially during times of conflict that has many couples concerned. The weakest area in our marriage is probably communication. And everything else I think would fall underneath that. He is very good about talking superficial issues, my job, family, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. but when it comes to discussing me and him, that's one area that he feels terribly uncomfortable with and likes to joke and likes to put it off as, as long as possible. There would be times when I'd want to talk or I wouldn't want to talk and she'd want to talk or vice versa and um, that created some tension that we had to resolve. We have problems communicating with each other and so that causes us to not know who each other is after all these years and that makes life real tough. You don't know who you're married to and you don't know who you're married to unless you communicate with them. Why is it so hard at times to communicate with the one we love? Have you had those moments in your marriage when you felt the lines of communication were down? Nothing was getting through? Well, communication during a conflict usually involves three simple ingredients. Let's start with listening. Are you a good listener? How much of what is said do you actually hear? Would your spouse say that you know how to listen? She would uh, really like me to listen to her and uh, to try to understand some of the things she's going through. Well, when I listen to Mark, sometimes I hear the words, but I have trouble hearing what his heart is saying, looking past what he says to really what his heart is saying. I think sometimes Susan's a good listener. Uh, there are other times where I think she's preoccupied with all that's going on in her life with the kids and work and things around the house that uh, when we do finally have moments alone to talk about things, it's hard for her at times to shift the gears or to filter all these other things out that she's preoccupied with and actually really listen to what I what I'm saying and a lot of times I'll get a lot of mm-hmm 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 and I know she's not listening and so I have to call her attention to that and ask her to really listen to what I'm saying if you don't listen when your spouse is talking then communication is impossible now let's look at the second key ingredient talking even in the middle of a conflict the power of spoken words in your marriage is like a rudder. You see, what you say and how you say it can steer your conversation toward the peace and quiet of a very safe harbor or into the turmoil of a stormy sea. And tragically, during a conflict, our words usually hurt. Using the word always, you always do that. You never do that. Always and never. It's just so all-inclusive. Calling names is, is just a way to, to stop the argument or throw up a smoke screen, get pe a person off your, off your case, uh, but it doesn't do any good. When we argue, I feel like um, he sort of like tries to really become, you know, the intellectual, the way he argues, and he tries to make me feel like I'm really dumb. But when we were first married, I can think of um, some situations where he really would